Well, hello there. I've always been a fan of literature and all my life, ever since I was very, very young, I could, I wanted to be a writer. I learned to read at a pretty early age. And so I started uh, reading everything that I could, every author that I could find. And one of the earliest authors I started reading when I was young, and uh, even though I didn't, I didn't understand it, I had, I had to go through it a couple of times and look up all the words, and it took me a while, uh, was Dickens. And I've always been, <clears throat> Dickens has always been you know, top of my list. Uh, and I, I had a teacher once say to me, and this, uh, again, I was really young, and it was in elementary school, and I had checked out a, a Charles Dickens book, and and I read. It was it was Great Expectations, and uh, the teacher had said to me, she saw it in my hand, and she said, "Nobody writes like Dickens." <laughs> which kind of blew me away. And then she kind of leaned in really close and said, uh, uh, I forgot to look up the quote in my brain before I started this. Uh, but let me see what she said. She said, um, the window was frosted over with rind as if goblins had been crying on the windowsill all evening. Kerouac, Neil Cassidy, and Allen Ginsberg, and Big Ed Dunkel. <laughs> uh, anyways, th this isn't about them. <laughs> Getting off track, forgive. Um, this is about a writer that I got into immensely. Uh, <laughs> way too much, in fact. And that writer is Hunter S. Thompson. And um, I didn't do, I, I was very straight edge in school. Um, I didn't do any drugs when I was younger. And <laughs> I didn't like even like drink alcohol or anything. I, yeah, it was, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I didn't used to. <laughs> I got into Hunter S. Thompson younger as a kid and I read everything that he ever wrote and a lot of things that people step over and forget about when talking about Hunter S. Thompson is they they always go to the gonzo journalism and the craziness and the drugs and the uh, you know fear and loathing in Las Vegas and they don't sit down and think dear god this man could write and he could write because he experienced it. I mean, read, read Hell's Angels, and you'll see that book is just, you know, they, they, oh shit, I ruined it, I'll cut it. I cut it, I cut it, don't worry, go read the book. Spoilers for everything for Hunter S. Thompson, <laughs> like everything. Grew up in Colorado, and in my literature life, it was Colorado, and Hunter S. Thompson lived in Woody Creek, Colorado, which is far away from where I lived in Manitou Springs. Uh, however, I was such a huge fan of him uh, that all my life I had planned and, uh, and um, uh, you know, to go to go up to Woody Creek and see him because I'd read all about his adventures in Woody Creek and you know I'd written letters to him and all sorts of stuff, but. I knew where he hung out. I don't know, it's a stalker-ish thing. Sorry. Big fan of Hunter Thompson, okay? And, uh, and before Fear and Loathing came out, uh, he was, he was accessible. <laughs> you could talk to him and, and that sort of thing. After that, you know, is I mean, he was still, he was always popular, but, um, once the movie came out, then, you know, <laughs> but, um, I went to Woody Creek when I was a kid, I went to Woody Creek Tavern, 
Damn, I went with uh, with Sarah. I guess, uh, yeah, we, she was my girlfriend. I went with my girlfriend, Sarah. <laughs> and we drove in her car, a little black thing. And we drove, and it was during when the Aspens were turning. So we drove through all of these beautiful yellow, amazing Aspens. And, you know, it, it was sunny, kind of a little cold, not too cold, cold enough to be fashionable. And we drove uh, all the way through the Aspens, because Aspen, Colorado is right next to Woody Creek, Colorado, basically the same town. Um, uh, but as far, it's far away from Manitou. I think it's like two hours the way that we took. We went like the long way also. Um, but we went there because <laughs> there wasn't like tweets and stuff in those days, you know. Um, he, he went, he, I found out, I forget, uh, I forget how I found out, but I found out that he was going to be in Woody Creek, uh, for a little while. I don't know, whatever I heard. <laughs> and so, you know, I knew he hung out at this tavern. So we went up to the tavern and we got there and it was like kind of midday. Sat down and all the stuff. And, you know, I told the lady I was exactly my intentions. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. She's like, but don't, you know, don't bug him. She's like, he's friendly, but just, you know, go sit over there. She's like, it might be a long time before he even comes in. He may not even come in. If he does come in, he doesn't. He may stay forever. Or he may, you know. And she's like, so you can't bug him. So the only thing that I'll do is you go and sit over there. And if he comes in, I'll let him know. And if he calls you over, then you can talk to him. If he doesn't call you over, leave him alone. So and I was like, okay. And this was like before the movie. <laughs> it was like, who's, who's fuck this guy? Who's this guy? Uh, but so I sat. We sat there for. I don't know, we were we were there for maybe 20 minutes and we were gonna go play like a game or something and he came in and I sat there and I like like I freeze up around celebrities I can't uh, handle it um, people know that <laughs> so the Ryan Reynolds story is true I just I don't know why I freeze up <laughs> Celebrities are no better than anyone else. Okay, I get that. Um, but you look in the Brian Reynolds, I can see what you have to say. Okay. <laughs> uh, moving on, <laughs> getting back. So Hunter Thompson was, uh, so he came in and He sat down at, uh, I guess it was, I guess sat at the bar. I was sitting at the table and, you know, I was doing my best not to like look over at him. Like, so I'm not like staring like a, like I'm already being, being creepy, but he was my hero, you know? And uh, <laughs> we were sitting there for a little while and then he turns and like looks at us and like he looks and he waves like over and I got like super excited and like got up <laughs> and uh <laughs> I almost I think I almost spilled a drink like I ran over there and he's like not you jackass the girl and it was <laughs> it was like oh shit I'm sorry and so <laughs> I went to go back and he's like no I'm, uh, I'm just kidding with you so I got to meet him and it was great and uh Anyway, but also I had read, you know, I read every, every book, um, that he had written and, uh, um, I even met James Carville not too much longer after that in, um, in Mandalay Bay. I happened to be there and I happened, he happened to be there and I happened to recognize him. And he was, I said, <laughs> what did I say? Oh, something's, you know, I don't know what to say. I never know what to fucking say, okay? But I was like, uh, James Carville <laughs> said it, like I said it kind of weird like that. And he's like, and I was like, I met, 
Hunter S. Thompson. And he's like, he's like, what do you want, a picture or something? And I was like, no, no. And I, I like shook his hand and then he's like, oh, okay. He's like, you're, and then he like went on. It was like kind of, he was, you know, nobody, nobody ever has time for my shit.